You, you mentioned yeah. some of the uh, the advantages of being on the Rip Curl program, whether it's wetsuits or getting to tap into their team program and getting to learn from people like Mick. But another big one for you at that time were, were and I know how valuable it was, not just for you, but for other people in your generation with different sponsors, but were those wild cards into the CT. And mm. in 2009, which was the year you went on a, a major rampage on the qualifying series and qualified, you had at least two, if I remember right, um, wild cards, one at Bells Beach and one at Portugal. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we, that was one of the best things about being with the brands that was were supporting the World Tour events, um, especially Rip Curl. They had a lot of events. Um, I'd, I'd had a wild card at Pipe prior to that. I'd had a wild, a wild card in the search event at Ulu's. Um, I'd had, I think oh, I'd been to the Chile event. I'd been, yeah, there'd been lots of different wild cards and, you know, extras just through those brands being able to like groom you in that way of like, oh, here you go. Here's an opportunity. You know, here's an opportunity. And uh, it was 2009 where I got given those opportunities and and uh, turned them into something that, um you know, the brands were super stoked on and um, and I was incredibly thankful for. I ended up having, ended up having, uh, making, I think I got a ninth at at Bells and, but to get ninth, I had to surf against Kelly maybe once or twice or mm-hmm. um, I, I'm not sure the structure of the heats back then, but I think I probably would have surfed four times or maybe more uh, just to get to that, that stage in the event. Um, and that for, for me was like such a big highlight to have Kelly and and beat him in Australia at Bells, which is for sure Australia's like richest history as as far as like competitive surf events go. Um, and and maybe even maybe even the world that that's a pretty up there event as far as how long it's been running. Yeah, um, n- not even just how long it's been running, but like all the even what we were talking about before, like you know, the connection to Aboriginal culture that's there and the songline stories mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That is like, as far as the gathering of the tribe goes, something that resonates globally. But what you talked about before in beating Kelly is you beat him again in Portugal. And this was, this was it, it's, it's important to put it in a context, right? Because this is 2009. This is pre-Kelly's 10th world title, but he is at like peak power. You know, and and working mm. on tour and seeing how like your Taj and Joel and Mick and the Hobgoods and Bobby and all these other kind of contenders had to deal with him, and even some of the young guys that were coming in, you knew Danes and Jordies and stuff. Um, it was so impressive, and I remember it was a huge talking point that season because everyone, most people, if not everyone, would wither having to surf against Kelly. Like even sort of the contenders, like he had that psychological edge over people to where they'd be beaten before they'd even paddle out. And that was a huge takeaway for, I remember everyone in the surfing world that year is that here's this young kid that got these wild cards. And as you said, you had, you beat him twice at Bells and you beat him again at Portugal. And I think I actually talked to your dad in Europe that year. I think he was in Europe and I was talking to him about it yeah. and he was just like, well, you know, Owen's not phased in about by, by Kelly. Is that something that you guys intentionally, I mean, we talked about it before, but like, is that something you guys focused on, like having to face someone like him at, at that young of an age? Um, I think the reason that I was unfazed is because it never was focused on. It was never thought mm. about. It was never, oh, you've got, come up against Kelly, you've got to be unfazed. You've got to be this competitive beast or this or that. It was um, at that stage of my life, there was just so many experiences coming in that I was eating up that it was just another another experience and, uh, another chance. And I, I just didn't, I just didn't, I think being, I'd been around the world tour and whatnot, but I wasn't on the world tour as such and caught up in the, you know, like I for sure Mick and Joel and those guys would have had this like competitive mind battle. And you see the Andy and Kelly battle and whatnot that they had, there was like so much, connection with them both coming back at each other and yeah. you know maybe Kelly got the better of them that way but I wasn't there as such so as much as Kelly might have been trying to come at me this way 
there was nowhere for, nowhere in front to get at. I just was just this, you know, stoked grom that was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> and it's it was, actually, uh, it, it's interesting the way you put that, right? Because it's it sounds like be, between the trips you got to take and then the wild card opportunities you'd had in the past, you'd been there enough to have a familiarity that made you comfortable being there. Yeah. But as you put it, not so much that it was a day to day thing or an event to an event thing where Kelly was just attacking you psychologically, you know, and it's actually yeah. a really good takeaway. I think, I mean, we're talking about Kelly specifically, but almost to any young developing surfer where it's like, you have to find that happy medium and that balance where it's like, you can't come in completely cold if you can avoid it. And you also don't want to come in thinking about it so much that you, you freeze up and you open yourself to that kind of assault. Yeah, that's it's funny you do say that, and and, and mem- remembering back now, there was definitely times where I said to Dad like, "Oh, like I wanna, I wanna do this event and I wanna do that event," and he was like, "Nah, don't do it. Go on, go and do something else." So there probably is that like natural balance that I found through, um, you know, getting enough events and having enough experiences on the search trips and whatnot. Um, and and maybe that's kind of where that what came through is like I had enough comfortability with heats and and um, and how to surf heats and and you know not not enough so that I was so connected to the sport or to the to the competitive mind games of what was going on at the tour that that time like it's it's no secret you know like the, they all talk about about the mind games that Kelly was playing and he'll say what mind games was I playing but. <laughs> I don't know about him because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he also claims that everyone surfs the surf ranch way more than him. I think the mind games are just constant where it's like, hey, your name's on the building. Uh, <laughs> that, that level of like um, mental approach, is that something that you had, you had such success early on, you know, um, in your career once you were a CT surfer? You, is that something that carried through? Um, did it feel any different that rookie year in 2010? You finished seventh, you won rookie of the year. Did it feel any different in 2011? You had that historic like back to back to back finals against Kelly. And, you know, you beat him in New York, um, you finished third. Did, did anything disrupt or were you just feeling like you were going from strength to strength in those early years on tour? Yeah, I think I was, I think there's two things to that. I felt like I was going from strength to strength just throughout life, like eating up different experiences and, and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, getting close, getting, getting every experience that I was just eating it all up. And then I think after that, you know, I got close there to, to winning a world title on that second, second, well, I was close there in the race, maybe not points wise by the end of it. I think Kelly smashed it out of the park. Um, but, um, I was, I was in that, in that race. And then I feel like I then put too much focus. Like I put too much intention. I put like I tr- overtrained or over, you know, overexerted, you know, yeah, lost, I felt like maybe lost a bit of that balance or that natural balance that I had through search trips and, you know, having fun and, and definitely throughout the years I, I, uh, got, got that back at, through different stages and whatnot. Um, but definitely like once you get to that, there's so many opinions coming in at you or, or people that, or, you know, you're there and then it's like, it's just invites opinions and invites people or sometimes it's help, but maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was, who knows. But, um, yeah, I felt, I felt like, I. I, I had like a really steady rise and then I had a few injuries that definitely set me back and whether that was over training or, or the way I was training, they're, they're all things that I look back at and go, oh, bugger, I wish I didn't have that injury. I was right on a, right on a roll there and um, uh, things like that. But I mean, that, they're, they're also the experiences that shape me who I am today. So I, you know, I can't, I, I'm, I'm proud of all the, things that I've learned through those injuries and those some of those things are gold in your life too you might it might be a a a loss in a one sense but I gained I gained every time through those injuries as well in other senses you like that well if so 
subscribe over there, and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.